Hi, welcome back to 16-Bit Bench. Matt here. Um, this is part two of my Game Gear Raspberry Pi project. Uh, when we uh, last spoke about this, I was sort of sizing the parts up inside the case, working out where things needed to go. Uh, we've moved forward since then, so uh, what we have now is the buttons are installed. Um, these are all prototype, this is all prototype buttons, that's why they're, they're white and not, you know, a more suitable colour like black. But yep, all the buttons and switches are installed now in the front of the case. And I have a Teensy here that's doing the uh, USB driver for, for a joystick device. So when you plug this in, it appears as a joystick device. And when you use um, the um, emulation station sort of software in, uh, in the Raspberry Pi, uh, what you'll see is that you'll be able to configure the device button by button. So up, down, left, right, it's, uh, it's perfect for that. Um, so in order to get to this stage, what we've done is designed some, some bespoke components to fit inside the Game Gear and then printed them out in a 3D printer. So if you see here, I have uh, plates on the left and right that are house the buttons and then I've wired the switches up to those and then um, to the Teensy there. Uh, so we've got uh, a left and right switch plate and then uh, triggers, left and right triggers. Um, other than that, there's uh, not much modification needed to the case. Uh, I've cut some posts to height and some other stuff I've moved around. On the back side, I've removed some of the um, uh, sort of standoffs that will pro provide in the original Game Gear. They provide pressure against the back of the board, and some of those have gone just to make more space here. So you know we're still all fitting within in the case, and the case closes. Uh, the other thing I've physically done is there's a USB um, connector here that's going to go where the Game Link connector goes uh, and it will go under a little cover. So I've just got an interim cover here that I found on uh, Thingiverse. If you search on Thingiverse for USB cover, you get uh, you get this um, device, which is just a sort of plate with a bit sticking out. But that fits uh, in the end of the USB. So all I need to do is, is size that up and work out what size that needs to be. And inside the um, Game Gear, I've stuck a little shelf that the USB um, connector sits on. So that's so the connector is held at the right sort of position. Um, so when, when you pull the cover off, there's the USB right there. And I think that's pretty neat using the existing holes. I'm pretty happy with that. I've seen other uh, Game Gear Raspberry Pis where they've hacked the case to pieces and I really want to avoid doing that. The only hacking I've really done on the outside is for the triggers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the computer. I'm going to show you some of the uh, 3D components that we've made and also how to program the Teensy and the program we've written for the Teensy. And um, then we'll use it as a joystick within Windows and you'll see the buttons work. So that's the, that's the next thing. So we'll do a tour of the inside of Game Gear. So um, <clears throat> this is the switch button plate and you can see the wiring here. And then we've got the D-pad plate here. At the top of the plate it's holding a micro switch that's going, that's going to the triggers, so left and right triggers. And then down the bottom we've got the Teensy existing uh, speaker that we're going to retain. Here's the USB uh, plate and some registration marks I've drawn on it. So if we take a look at the front, we've got one and two, three and four, start button, up down there for a D-pad. What I like about the micro switch is they're all nice and clicky. So these are nice and clicky buttons. Uh, that's the triggers left and right. Not as clicky as I'd like. Um, there's probably some work to be done to refine those. You can just see the button there underneath it, sort of hiding in there. Um, yeah, maybe there needs to be a little bit more clearance. Um, and as you see, this trigger kind of sits much nicer in than this this one does. And that's probably just in the variance in the way I've cut the um, holes in the case. And yeah, when you manually cut holes like that, you're never going to get it exactly right every single time. I've been using Tinkercad uh, to create the components require that I require to build the Game Gear Pi. Um, so if we look at some of the some of the components I've got here.
Um, so things we started with are, are like this um, Game Gear button. Um, so I found that probably I need to adjust the height of some of these buttons. I don't need them to be this tall. Um, then here we can see the uh, evolution of the D-pad switch um, until we come sort of up to here and I have the entire plate. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at um, the actual plate that I've built. Now I'll load that up in the program. So this is the this is the D pad plate um, that that I've sort of built up over multiple iterations within within Tinkercad. So it has several components to it now. You can see there's a there's a switch holder here at the, at the top. This is actually the top side, um, and that's um, that's holding the trigger switch. Um, and then here you can see on the D pad. Um, I've got the four up, down, left, right switches here, and then there's a sort of central well which is holding the um, sort of rocker ball of the D-pad in, and that makes the uh, that I found after a couple of iterations that made the whole thing work much much better. So this holds the D-pad and the and the um, left side uh, trigger. If we go back and look at some other designs, find the big plate. There it is. So this is the uh, this is the uh, sort of main button plate. So this is holding this is holding um, the five switches. So start one, two, three, and four, and then it's also holding a uh, a switch for the trigger, and that's hold, held in one piece of plastic. And there are cutouts here for some posts that are in, inside the Game Gear. Um, See, so yeah, I'm really pleased with this. Got kind of lucky the first try. It worked. It worked reasonably well uh, straight out, and I just needed to make one or two adjustments. Um, so yeah, this is almost ready to be sort of a production piece for the for the Game Gear Pi. Uh, there's a couple of other bits and pieces we've got. So if we look at the uh, trigger, so for the trigger, I only designed one trigger. Uh, and then mirrored it for left and right. See, it looks a little bit like a sort of stingray, I suppose. Um, but yeah, we've got the main trigger portion here, and that's been sort of rounded off in its design. And it's uh, it's kind of interesting the way you can you can do that. So um, to make sort of a something to cut away at um, at shapes, so a sort of inverse. Uh, round an inverse cylinder really um, you make a cylinder that's a hole and you have a have a block and you add these two together so you'll group these together and now if you look at that that is a that will then can also be filled as a hole and that will now cut away um, in a sort of round shape or where it will cut away a shape so what I basically did was had have that over over the trigger and use that there are various different curved shapes to sort of give me this curved uh, sort of trigger shape. And that is designed to sort of blend in with the top of the Game Gear where it curves there. It's not 100% and I, I guess it don't really want it to be because it still has to look like a trigger. Um, shoulder button even. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with the way that came out. And then there's some other bits and pieces in Tinkercad. Um, the USB cover, which I um, got from this guy on uh, Thingiverse, so that's uh, yeah, he designed a um, a USB cover. Um, it's not brilliant. You don't you don't need the whole thing. You don't need the whole USB shaped plug. You just need the the upright, and um, that's all I printed. Um, so yeah, that was pretty good. And then that's the USB plug support that I've built. There, so yeah, those are the 3D um, sort of printed parts that we've we've made so far. The way I'm doing it is sort of um, fitting apart, looking how it works, and thinking about what the next bit I need to I need to fit is, and um, using that basically. It's sort of it's an iterative process, you know, step by step by step, 
to um to produce the final thing. So the Teensy is really an Arduino um, microcontroller in a sort of USB package that um, you know is, is relatively cheap and off the shelf, and it's great for um, for these sort of purposes. So I didn't need to do very much programming at all. Um, you, the Teensy comes with um, well, the Teensy software when you download it has several examples that um, you can load and look at. Um, the joystick example is one of those. So basically all I did was take the example program. Um, the example program only had 10 buttons programmed in it. Now for my game gear, I need 11. So it's left and right shoulders, five face buttons, and that's four buttons including start, and then the four buttons for um, up, down, left, right. So that's 11 buttons in total. Uh, and the teens is capable of supporting that many buttons, but the program didn't. So I needed to, I needed to add um, add another button to uh, to the program. And that was easy as cutting and pasting the final line uh, and then just incrementing it by one. So all you do is you plug the TNZ in over USB and then hit the hit the black button on the TNZ and that puts it into programming mode. And then from here, you can just upload it directly into the TNZ and it works straight away. So what we can do now is I can plug my, um, my TNZ in while it's wired into the Game Gear. I can plug that into um, my PC and we can have a look at how it performs uh, as a USB device. So really minimal programming. Literally all I did was was, was upload this exam example to my Teensy and that was it. So I've plugged it in. Um, if you are in Windows, if you go to game controllers. Um, so what you need to do from the Arduino programmer is to set the USB type. So you could be keyboard, mouse, and joystick, and it, then it, it when you plug it in, um, the TNZ presents as a, as a joystick or, or whatever is written in your program, if it's a keyboard or, or whatever, a human interface device. So I can bring up the, um, the um, test sort of window for joysticks in Windows, and I can press my buttons. So, um, the right trigger is one, the start button is two, then uh, three, four, five, six. So that's on my face buttons, six buttons on that side. Now on the other side, there's another five. So I've got a trigger, seven, eight, eight is up, nine is down, 10 is left, 11 is right. Okay, so you can do, do a dragon punch, do a Hadouken, do a... Um, uh, well, wing kick. Mm. Yeah, so all my Street Fighter buttons work, and that's that's kind of you know what I want. Uh, guess we're modelling the SNES pad really, and that's that's what we have. We have eleven. Well, I need twelve buttons for the SNES, so I'm missing a button. Uh, and the twelfth button select is going to be handled by a um, capacitive touch uh, touch button. That is going to be sort of on the game gear in some obvious place um, where you can where you can hit it when you need to. But yeah, I'm really pleased with this. Um, the button the button things went went in really easily. Um, just a few iterations to get those kind of switch plates working. Wired the Teensy up, and that all worked first time. Didn't have to make any changes. So yeah. Um, so that's how far we've got with the game gear. The buttons are wired. The next step is going to be integrating the power um, board from the Game Gear uh, so it can power the um, it can power the Raspberry Pi and that's going to involve, involve having a soft switch so when you turn off the Game Gear the Raspberry Pi goes into shutdown mode it doesn't go uh, it doesn't immediately just power off um, so there's a couple of parts I need to get I think I need a couple of 5 volt regulators to get it to work the way I think it will work um, and that will be interesting. So that's the next step. So if you found any of this useful, uh, please like and subscribe to our channel. Um, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's 16-Bit Bench. Um, there'll be a, many more videos, at least three more videos on how on building this uh, Game Gear Pi. Um, I mean, we haven't even got to imaging the um, the the uh, memory card for the Raspberry Pi yet. I haven't even bothered doing that bit, fitting the screen and all that stuff. Um, removing components from the Raspberry Pi, replacing those. 
Um, that's something we need to do because it's too big at the moment. So all that stuff's coming up in future videos. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for coming by and I'll see you next time. Is your entire population made up of clones, Prime Minister? Clones? 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 Clones?